what you can do is this so let's say you go to walmart and you want to buy you, you know your groceries you've bought them chances are that the things you buy whenever you go grocery shopping will be more than 10 right so what you do instead of paying for everything once you know you know when you go to the cashier or wherever and then they pack it in and then you know you just swipe your card and you're good to go don't do that what you can do is to when you buy one like so let's say you buy this you swipe this you pay for this you buy this you pay for this you buy this you pay for this you buy this you pay for this so you buy 10 items they could be one dollar each or you can go to um a dollar tree to do that so you know that maybe you're spending ten dollars every month to avoid the maintenance fee everyone welcome back to my channel if you're seeing me for the first time you are welcome and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so very much yes before we go further into the video i just wanted to give a shout out to one of my in fact my most favorite commenter and you know subscriber on this channel akin you've been so so supportive so i'm using this medium to say a huge thank you for the support so far he has commented on all of my videos I mean that is amazing so thank you so very much now moving forward my name is Valen Ose and I share my experiences here as an international student in the United States of America so you see a lot of college lifestyle vlogs here and there and practically my life in the United States so if you find this interesting and you want to know more or connect more with aspiring and current international students here in the United States then feel free to subscribe to my channel so you can become a part of this family now in today's video I'm going to be talking about um, the factors you have to consider before you choose a bank in the United States of America as an international student yes most times international students who are my friends or even aspiring international students who I mentor reach out to me and then they want to find out the best bank that suits them but I think the right thing to do is for you to actually identify the factors that suits your particular need and the services that you require of the bank so that's what we're going to be discussing in this video so I would want you to watch this video to the end because I'm going to be giving out something in this video that I believe will be very useful to you in choosing or identifying the right bank for your needs before we move further i want you to know that we have a telegram group which is a community for aspiring and current international students where i mentor you one-on-one -on -one. you have that one-on-one -on -one access to me and then you can also connect with other students as well your questions will be answered in that group all you have to do is to click the link in my description down below and then you can join the group and anything else that is required of you will be communicated once you join the group again i have a mailing list which is something that I feel you should be a part of. And all you have to do is also click the link in my description down below to join the mailing list. On that mailing list, you get never heard before stories about my life here in the United States of America and useful resources that will help you achieve your study abroad dreams. So, I mean, you just want to be a part of that family, okay? So let's move on to today's video because I know that you're eager to know what these factors are and I am myself so guys welcome back to my channel now we're going to be discussing the factors to consider when choosing a bank here in the us and for me i think the first factor to consider is the customer service of that bank as an international student when you're coming here there are so many things that you don't know and so you're going to be asking a lot of questions so you want to ensure that the bank that you're choosing is a bank that is ready to assist you a bank that has a customer service that is dedicated to answer your questions i mean not just someone that you call or a customer service that will place you on hold whenever you have questions to ask because trust me you're going to have a lot of questions to ask so having a bank or choosing a bank with a great customer service is key to ensuring that you know you have your needs met you have your questions answered and then you know the right path to take do you understand what i mean so ensure that that bank has a great customer service and how do you get to find out ask questions ask your fellow international students ask the international office they will guide you and even if you are um, somebody that is engaged in a community or a church or an organization on campus you definitely get those questions answered by that organization so reach out to them ask them just find out which of the banks that you are using and how the customer service has been so far so the second thing that you have to consider 
when you are choosing a bank here in the States is the requirement. Now, by requirement, I mean are there charges attached to um, the bank, the account? So when you're, when you're um, going to open that bank account, do they need a minimum um, balance requirement from you? Or do they even have charges, you know, um, for that account? By that, I mean, most banks would require that you have like a minimum um, account balance for you to open that account or, you know, for you to even um, be free of some charges like monthly fees or maintenance fees or things like that. But it, there are also banks that do not even require any money, like zero minimum balance. So you want to ask those questions you want to choose a bank that would give you the option to save more money versus a bank that will give you an option where you get to spend more i mean coming here the first thing you want to do is to save as much money as possible versus just you know starting off on a note where you're beginning to be you know paying five dollars here and there and by the time you you know add up all of this money together it's a huge sum that you can actually use for something else so figure out what the requirement is before you make that decision of choosing that bank as your personal bank okay so the third factor to consider is the location and proximity of that bank to your home or to the school so if you are an international student living on campus you want to ensure that the bank has a branch that is close to school because i mean if it is far away from school, you are going to be paying extra money to go get your money. Does that make sense? Or you're going to be paying Uber to get your money from the bank versus having a branch that is close to the school where you can just walk there, five minutes walk and you're done. You get your money, you open your bank account or anything that requires you going to the branch office but you can walk there and save that transportation money that you would have spent on uber or even you know fueling your car does that make sense again if you're staying off campus for me i was living off campus so my bank was pretty much farther away from me but i could still walk to the bank it was only twice throughout my journey there that i actually paid uber to get money from the bank because it was very very like i needed it i was desperate so i had to do it so we want to choose a bank that is not just close to the school if you live on campus but a bank that's close to your home if you live off campus so you need to consider that before choosing a bank so the fourth thing that you have to consider is the ease of deposit now we're in the era where there's direct deposit i'm going to talk about direct deposit much later in this video or in subsequent videos because this is going to be more like a series where i'll be discussing money terms you know um you know saving options budgeting as an international student here in the states okay but we're in an era where direct deposit is the order of the day by that i mean you, your money your paycheck can just be automatically deposited into your bank account without you being given a check or being issued any some you know just it goes directly into your bank account right but again there will be times where you need to make some deposit yourself for instance somebody gave you cash like in my time when i got here a white family gave me 40 dollars even though i didn't deposit that money but let's say you are the person and you wanted to deposit that cash into the bank how easy is, is it for you to do that do they have atms around you that you can easily go to and then make that deposit and also if you're giving a check like you know somebody sends a check to you or mail a check to you can you pay that money easily like a dear mobile um, banking options with that bank that would make things easy for you you know you know so that you can easily deposit money from the comfort of your home for instance when you get when a check is mailed to you the banking or the online option allows you to scan that check and then put the front page and the back page and then you can deposit that money directly into your bank account so you need to figure out if that bank that you want to choose has such an option because if they don't then it's going to be a lot tedious for you because you have to go to the branch every now and then and that's you know going to be very overwhelming trust me so the fifth thing that you have to consider is the online banking feature i know we talked about the you know the ease of deposit but by online banking feature i mean you have to choose an account where 
anything that it requires you to make an online bill or pay an online bill that is free like your bank is not going to charge you for maybe signing up you know your account to enable you pay your bills online there are banks that would actually charge you money for doing such so you want to ensure that you're choosing a bank that doesn't charge you anything like it's free for you to have such um, functionality in your bank account so ensure that that is an option for you but if you're comfortable with paying bills of course go for it but as an international student i think the right thing or the best thing for you to do is to find options or ways that you can save money as much as possible if you're enjoying this video so far please consider giving us a huge thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so the next factor to consider this is my favorite factor to be honest the next factor to consider are fees like what are the fees that are attached to this account or to the bank itself now by fees i mean monthly fees atm fees assistance fees for instance if you use the atm for a number of time um, in a month are they going to charge you and if yes are you comfortable paying such if no look for a different bank do you understand now some banks even if depending on the type of account they also charge you a fee monthly now that fee is what they call your monthly fee or maintenance fee so they are charging you a fee for helping you to save your money in their bank right now there are banks that do not charge you nothing to do this so why would you choose a bank that would be charging you money monthly so figure out if they have such you know happening in the bank and if they do then look for a different bank but if you're comfortable paying such fees of course go for it now there are also banks that would be charging you money to for any assistance they give to you for instance when you call their customer service some banks would even tell you that you are going to be billed either um, to your phone or something so are these things free are they toll free or they are paid for services so find out if the services that you're getting from that bank is um free or it is paid for and when you figure that out you can decide to either go for that bank or not go for the bank entirely for me i chose a bank where i wasn't charged any money per month but the thing with that bank is it was only available for a year so they gave me that option because i am an international student obviously and so for the period of one year that i bank with them i was not going to be um, charged any monthly fee now the reason why I'm, I'm not mentioning this bank is because i want to you know send out a newsletter and that is why i keep saying please join my mailing list so that you'll be among the people that will receive that information when i send out that newsletter listing out the top 10 banks that you can bank with as an international student here in the states okay so figure out which banks are you know in synergy with your money with your budget and with what is happening back home do you understand i mean exchange rate is not friendly i keep saying that on this channel so the next thing that you have to oh wow i said the previous one was my favorite but i think this one is also my favorite i don't know which one um but i think this one should be my favorite my top um factor to consider and that is the cost of international transfer guys you're an international student what does that mean that most times your money is going to be coming from um, your home country so I'm Nigerian most my money comes from Nigeria um, so for any time that I receive money from Nigeria into my um, account here in the US I am charged a fee right and for any time that I send money back to Nigeria I am charged a fee so what is the fee like in that bank all right so if there are banks that are offering um, you know free charges for international transfer you would want to bank with such a bank versus you going for an option that would be charging you huge and i mean i think i'm charged 40 to 50 dollars for every transfer so if for example i let's say i wanted to send 50 dollars to nigeria i'm charged 
fifty dollars for that transfer and let's see you know sometimes when you want to send money you just forget that oh you wanted to send actually i wanted to send a hundred dollars and then i forgot and i sent fifty dollars or you know somebody else just you know and then you're like oh i should have sent it together and then because you so it is per transfer so it's not going to be like oh part the whole month you see what i mean so imagine if you're sending money out five times in the in the month 50 50 dollars times five that's a lot of money already 250 dollars that's a lot that you can use for something else the same applies to somebody sending you money so let's say your sponsor is sending you money you're going to be charged <laughs> so you should also have that in your mind so that when you're talking to your sponsor or your family your parents whoever is sending you money let them know that they are going to charge you for that money that is being sent to your account and then you can even ask them to add the fee on top so that let's say you wanted to pay your tuition with that money or you wanted to purchase something or pay your rent with that money and then the, the rent is six hundred dollars and they send they send you six hundred dollars it means that you'll be short of $50, right? So it is best for you to figure out if that bank have, you know, a low charge for international transfers or they even have zero charge, which is rare, but figure out, so let's say bank A charges $50 and bank B charges um, $30. You want to go for bank B because bank, bank B has a lower fee charge for international transfers. So as well, you can refer or um, tell your sponsor or whoever is sending you money about that charge so that they can add it and you don't get to be shortchanged in any way. Does that make sense? All right, so the next thing that you have to consider when choosing a bank account in the US is the availability of incentives. I mean, who does not like freebies? As an international student, you want to utilize anything that would just make your life easy and make you get all the coins because you know that where you're coming from, almost the money is very, very like, I mean, it's very, it's not friendly exchange rate is not friendly so because you know that exchange rate is not friendly you want to utilize the option of incentives by incentives i mean like do they have cashback bonus now cashback bonus is something that is a thing here now when you open an account with a bank they will give you money for you know like when you purchase an item in certain designated um you know maybe restaurants um superstores like walmart or even um target or things like that they would designate it and be like okay if you shop here for this period of time maybe for january to april if you shop in these places then you're going to receive some sort of percent of that money that you've spent so let's say you bought something of a hundred dollars at walmart they might give you five percent of that money back so you want to ensure that you're banking with you know a bank that have options for cashback bonus or a bank that you know have nothing like maintenance fee monthly maintenance fee one thing again that you can do to override this monthly maintenance fee is to make 10 purchases every month using your debit card so let me explain this i remember that when i was banking with this bank i was worried like I had i'm banking with two banks the one of them just said for the first year it's free no monthly charge or anything like that so but the second one said they were going to charge me whether i'm international or not it's none of their business and i'm going to reveal these banks in the newsletter that i'm sending so ensure that you click the link in my description to join my mailing list so that when i push out that newsletter you'll be among the people to know these banks that i'm going to mention so that you'll be on the lookout for them and you know decide which is your best or the one that suits your need okay so the that bank told me that i cannot you know i have to um, be charged on a monthly basis that the only way that i can work around that there are two ways one is for me to um, maybe have my paycheck sent to them on a monthly basis so if you have a job right you can remember when i talked about um direct deposit so when you um, connect or you accept that direct deposit between your employer and that bank then you are safe because they know that you're going to be sending them money every month so it makes sense that since they're going to be getting your money your paycheck is going to be sent to them every month then 
they don't care because i mean they know that you're not going to leave them for another bank so you're safe they're not going to charge you on a monthly basis again if you don't have a job yet or you're trying to you're still trying to find a job another way that you can override that maintenance fee is by making um 10 purchases in a month using your debit card i mean i know that is expensive or it looks expensive but the way that you can do this is for instance let's say you you go grocery shopping every month which is normal i know that for some people they just bulk buy so you might not necessarily have that option to like you know be buying things on a monthly basis especially for somebody like me that i'm picky so i cook most of the time and whenever i go shopping i just buy and then i know that i have the few things i don't need i need might just be things i can get around but what you can do is this so let's say you go to walmart and you want to buy you, you know your groceries you've bought them chances are that the things you buy whenever you go grocery shopping will be more than 10 right so what you do instead of paying for everything once you know you know when you go to the cashier or wherever and then they pack it in and then you know you just swipe your card and you're good to go don't do that what you can do is to when you buy one let's, let's say you buy this you swipe this you pay for this you buy this you pay for this you buy this you pay for this you buy this you pay for this so you buy 10 items they could be one dollar each or you can go to um a dollar tree to do that so you know that maybe you're spending ten dollars every month to avoid the maintenance fee which to me is is very annoying because at the end of the day what if i don't really need those items but because i have to um, override the maintenance fee i end up buying things ten dollars every month just to ensure that i don't you know i'm not charged a maintenance fee and when you think about it the ten dollars in a way is the same thing as the maintenance fee that they would have charged you but the only difference is that if you don't do that you will end up buying the same items and you still get your maintenance fee deducted from your account so it also makes sense so that's the way that you can walk around this you know maintenance fee that's a huge deal here in the united states for most of the banks that you find here so the the tenth um, factor to consider is the security of your funds how safe are your funds with the bank is the bank protected by fdic and now fdic is federal deposit insurance corporation now this is an agency that was set up many years ago to help banks or to protect to protect the interest of the customer and even the bank you know should they fold up or there's anything like bankruptcy or things like that so let's say you go to a bank you open your bank account you deposit your money and then you're like oh my god this is good and something happens the bank is like oh corona came and then they want to fold up or bankruptcy or anything how do you get your money back that is where fdic fdic comes into play and if you have you know you are registered with the um a credit union then you want to ensure that they are protected by the national credit union association so that your money is protected so when you're going to the bank you ask them are you insured by fdic or for the credit union are you insured by national credit union association and if they say yes then you can compare all of the other factors that i have mentioned earlier and you know their customer service ease of deposit um bank charges you know cost of international transfer um online banking feature all of those things when you put them together then you can now decide the bank that is the best bank for you based on your needs and the services that you require of the bank i hope that i made sense in this video and i've been able to take my time to explain all these factors so that you can understand what it is like what to look out for and how to go about you know choosing the right bank for you in my next video i'm going to be talking about you know the different kind of accounts that you have here in the states so that you can you know be well <laughs> be well um, educated you know what to expect you know i'm also going to be talking about the documents you need to open your bank account here so that's your coming you already have these things ready segmented and you know you just need to just bring out that file and you're good to go right and so this is the end of this video i remember when i started this video i said i was going to give out a freebie now the freebie that i'm giving out is 
the newsletter that I'll be sending out to those that are signed up to my mailing list, which is going to be listing out the top 10 banks for international students in the States. So to get that freebie, all you have to do is click the link in my description down below and sign up so that when I send that out this April, you will be among the people to receive that information and order never heard before stories of my journey here and useful resources that I do not share here on YouTube. I hope that makes sense, right? And of course, if you also want to consult me for your study abroad needs, if you're confused, if you are, you know, stuck, if you just need guidance, even though you are an aspiring or current international student, you can book a consultation with me. The link as well is in my description down below and I'll be glad to help you, you know, achieve your study abroad dreams and build useful networks along the way. So until we see again in my next video, I am so, so glad I remain valid author and I pledge to never give up and I hope that you do same so i'll see you guys bye